In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit IG28 color bar and dot generator. I'll give a little background on what color bar and dot generators are and how they were used for television servicing. We'll cover the specific features of this instrument and look at the front panel controls and inside circuitry. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit and say something about the circuit design it used. We'll see a demonstration of the generator in operation and then wrap things up with a summary. When televisions used cathode ray tubes, CRTs, for display, complex adjustments were needed to properly align the coils and magnets that were used to control the electron beam so that it displayed a proper image on the face of the CRT. Color televisions typically used a CRT with three electron guns, one for each of the red, green, and blue colors, and required even more careful alignment. This alignment included what was called purity adjustment, to ensure a uniform brightness and color hue across the screen, as well as convergence adjustments to ensure that the three electron beams were properly aligned with a grid of holes called the shadow mask over the full area of the screen. A pattern or dot generator was a common piece of television servicing equipment that produces a known good video signal with test patterns for adjusting the screen alignment of televisions. Common patterns include a series of dots and vertical and or horizontal lines that aid in adjusting the display. Bar generators produce a series of bars that allow checking, in the case of black and white television, the correct display of different shades of gray, and with color television, to check for the proper reproduction of the different shades of color. Pattern generators and bar generators are sometimes separate instruments, or as in the case of the IG28, can be features of the same unit. A dot and bar generator may produce a radio frequency or RF output and be connected directly to the antenna terminals of the television under test. Or it may provide a video signal that can be injected into the circuitry of the unit under test. Some generators also provide signals that can be directly connected to signals on pins of the CRT. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit produced several models of television bar and dot generators, starting with the BG-1 bar generator in 1954, and followed by the CD-1 color bar and dot generator in 1957, and the IG-62 in 1962. The former instruments were all vacuum tube based. The IG-28, the subject of this video, was a solid-state replacement for the IG-62, introduced in 1969 and sold until 1977. The IG-5258, offered from 1977 to 1982, was electrically identical to the IG-28, but with different styling of knobs and case color. The IO-101 vector scope also included a similar pattern generator, as well as a 3-inch vector scope display. The last unit offered by Heathkit was the IG-5240, a portable color bar and dot generator made from 1976 to 1985. The IG-28 was offered from 1969 through 1977 at a price of around US $90. Heathkit also offered a factory assembled version, the SG-28A, at about 50% higher in cost. The unit is all solid state and is suitable for both black and white and color television servicing. It provides a white pattern for purity adjustment as well as the following patterns, dots, cross hatch, vertical lines, horizontal lines, color bars, and grayscale bars, all with either a 3x3 or 9x9 display. Heathkit said that the 3x3 display was exclusive to Heathkit. It can produce RF output at VHF channels 2 through 6 with adjustable output level. It also produces a video signal with adjustable level and polarity. The chroma level of the video signal is adjustable, and a sync signal is provided on a front panel jack. The unit can inject a 4.5 MHz sound carrier to test adjustment of IF sound trap circuits. It also provides individual red, green, and blue signals which can be directly applied to the CRT pins with the ability to turn off any signal individually. 
The video signals are available from test leads that are hardwired to the unit and have alligator jacks. Two convenience AC outlets are provided on the front panel. It can be wired for 120 or 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz, but note that it only supports the NTSC video format used in North America and not other formats like PAL commonly used in Europe. On the rear panel is the AC power cable, a coax cable with test leads for the video signal, and a cable with ground and red, green, and blue signals for connecting to the control grids of a CRT. Note the special insulation piercing alligator clips on the RGB leads. These would be clipped onto the wires going to the CRT socket. This hole is to provide access to a trimmer cap on the RF circuit board. Cable clamps are provided to wrap and hold the test leads. Using hardwired cables is useful in that you can't lose them. Often the cables tend to get lost in old Heathkit instruments. On the front panel we have the following controls from left to right. The pattern switch selects between purity, dots, crosshatch, horizontal lines, vertical lines, color bars, or grayscale bars. The chroma control adjusts the intensity of the chrominance or color in the video signal. The video control is pulled to turn the unit on and adjusts the level and polarity of the video output when a video signal as opposed to RF is selected. The RF control adjusts the output level when RF output is selected from 0 to about 50,000 microvolts. The channel control adjusts the frequency of the RF output from VHF channels 2 through 6 and is a vernier dial. At left and right are two unswitched convenience power outlets for plugging in other test equipment or a television if desired up to 500 watts each. The six rocker switches from left to right are the display switch, which determines whether the test patterns are a 3x3 or 9x9 display of dots, lines, or bars. As many as 11 vertical and 10 horizontal lines or dots may be shown depending on whether the television display shows the edges of the screen. Most receivers have what is called overscan and typically will only show 9x9. The 4.5 MHz switch controls whether a 4.5 MHz sound carrier signal is added to the video signal. This is used to test adjustment of a television's IF sound trap circuits. The signal switch selects whether to produce modulated RF or a pure video signal at the output test leads. The red, blue, and green gun controls select whether the corresponding signals are output for each of the test leads for direct connection to the control grids of the CRT or whether they're grounded. Along the bottom we have a neon power lamp and banana jacks for the following signals. A sync output which can be used for servicing sync circuits without video or sets having separate video and sync demodulators. Ground connections and red, green and blue control grid signals for viewing chroma signal and demodulator phase adjustments. These are the same signals as appear on the cables coming out of the back of the unit. The unit has stick-on adhesive rubber feet on the bottom. The same style of case was used on a number of Heathkit instruments and matches other Heathkit test equipment of the era. Taking a look inside, most circuitry is on two printed circuit boards with additional point-to-point -point wiring to the front panel, most of which uses a couple of pre-assembled wiring harnesses. The power transformer and fuse are here on the chassis. The power transformer is described as a special copper banded low flux leakage unit to prevent stray magnetic fields from disrupting the receiver under test. The main circuit board has most of the timing circuitry including three crystal controlled oscillators. There are several trim pots and caps which need to be adjusted during calibration of the unit. The video signal is built up using digital logic chips from a 190.08 kHz master clock. It uses 10 integrated circuits, which are 700 series, a logic family known as RTL, which ran on 3.6 volts DC, and was later mostly superseded by 7400 series TTL logic. It's interesting to see how the different video signals for the test patterns, including color, were created using flip-flops and logic gates. 
the chips have the Heathkit part numbers printed on them, an indication that Heathkit was able to buy chips in high enough volume, in this case from Motorola, to have them custom branded. Mounted vertically is the video circuit board which generates the RF signal which can be tuned from channels 2 through 6 using a variable capacitor. There's one inductor made from tracks on the circuit board. Underneath the chassis are the connections to the power cord and test leads. I don't have a color television which uses a CRT, but I do have this Commodore computer monitor which accepts a composite video signal. I've connected the video output to the monitor, and we can see the various test patterns available. A plain white raster, dots, crosshatch, horizontal lines, vertical lines, color bars, and grayscale bars. These are in the 9x9 mode. We can also see them in the 3x3 mode. Adjusting the chroma control changes the level of color in the signal. Adjusting the video control, we can change the signal level and polarity. In this case, we want a positive signal, but depending on where in a television receiver you injected the signal, you might need it to be inverted. To test the RF input, we can use this 1955 Admiral Black and White TV, which I covered in another YouTube video. I've set the mode to RF output, and connected it to the TV antenna terminals and adjusted it to channel 3. We can see the same patterns, although obviously not the color bars. Because I don't have a CRT color TV, I can't demonstrate using the direct connection of the red, green, and blue grid leads to a picture tube. I bought this unit in December of 2015 from a buyer in Quebec, Canada. It was sold as is and the seller didn't know if it was working, but it appeared to be in reasonably good condition. It arrived well packed and had the original cable still attached. On the outside, it was quite dirty, almost muddy. One knob was missing and the plastic shaft for the RF control was broken off. There was a little rust on the case, but it was pretty clean inside. I cleaned the case and knobs. One of the case screws was not original and a standoff was missing. I replaced both. The Heathkit stick-on feet tend to slip around and these ones had. I removed them and re-glued them with contact cement. The plug's ground lug had been cut off. This was not good practice, but it was often done so that the unit could be floating from ground and used on televisions with hot chassis. It appears to have all original parts and no modifications. The date codes on the ICs are from 1972 and 1973, with the latest being 7345, indicating that the unit could not have been manufactured earlier than late 1973. I removed some of the solder flux residue from the bottom of the PCB as it can sometimes become conductive. I ordered a replacement for the broken RF potentiometer. I tested it using the Commodore Composite Monitor and Admiral TV that I used in the demonstration. It seemed to work fine. I was not able to find a full manual on the internet, only a schematic, but I did find a partial IG5228 manual, which is fine since the units are electrically identical. I ran through the adjustment procedure, which involves adjusting some trimmer pots and caps for correct display on a television. I also ran through the checks shown in the manual with an oscilloscope. The manual has extensive coverage on how to use the unit to perform television alignment including linearity, purity, and static and dynamic convergence, and color demodulator phase adjustment. It also has a section covering the relevant principles of color television, troubleshooting the unit, and the theory of operation.
Back in the days of CRT-based color television, adjustments such as convergence were relatively complex and required an instrument such as the IG-28 to perform. Along with a marker sweep generator, this is one of the specialized instruments needed for color television repair. This type of equipment is now obsolete for a number of reasons. Modern TVs typically no longer require alignment, the circuitry being fixed and or aligns itself. Furthermore, analog television broadcasting using the NTSC standard has been phased out in most of North America and replaced by digital television, although most televisions still accept an analog input. Incidentally, if you need to generate test patterns to align an old television, a simple option is to use a DVD player and a test pattern DVD, examples of which can be found for free on the internet. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.